What's up, everybody? Pastor Antonio. I'm here with Pastor Jessica, Pastor Richard, and we just wanted to gather. Uh, we wanted to have a conversation, really, and include you as part of this. Um, during this time, man, we are going to be talking about the subject of faith over fear. It's been something that we've been saying a lot over recent weeks. Pastor Jessica has been talking about it a lot, and it's a lot more than just a cool saying or a cool hashtag. Uh, so let's dive into what this looks like. I know, Pastor Jessica, really, this has been something on your heart to really share with people uh, and to to encourage us all to choose faith over fear. Pastor Jess, Absolutely. what does that look like? Well, you know, um, so many times I, I know that our world is uneasy. Mm -hmm. It falls apart around us everywhere. But yet God is always strong and steady. And so we were having a worship night um, a few weeks ago before all of this coronavirus and everything started yeah. and I could just feel something in the spirit and there's been I was with the women rock girls and I was like something is going on I could just feel it and uh, the Lord has always um, blessed me with being able to have a prophetic word at different mm -hmm. times yeah. and um, I've really been just praying and asking the Lord to give me a word mm -hmm. for to be an encouragement to the people and so during worship I asked the Lord do you want to say anything mm -hmm. what are you saying and he gave me this word so I'm going to read it to you and it says you are all going to be okay my church will stand my church will stand I will provide and what the devil thought he was using to weaken the church they will be the strongest in this I will keep them I will use them and you will see my glory my church is being gathered when the world is being scattered do not forsake the assembling of brethren there I will pour out my spirit take a breath and follow my lead I am in charge and follow me and I will come for my church yeah. and I just when we read that yeah. we didn't know this was going to happen right. Right. and so um, when it all started happening and we as pastors were like making these quick decisions and right. like we took us four years in a transition we were changing <laughs> in like four hours right. and I'm going oh my goodness yeah. this is nuts yeah. you know yeah. and um and the Lord just kind of softened and I heard a sweet whisper go go back to your word Go back to the word I gave you. And the top line, you know, on the notes, the, it highlights your top line now. Yeah, yeah. And it, the only thing that just kept sticking out was, you're all going to be okay. And he said, faith over fear, daughter. I just heard him say that to my yeah, heart. He whispered yeah. that to me. And then um, we had another church member that had reminded me that Pastor Dan, who at times gets gifts of prophecy, right. but not always, mm -hmm. he had a word two years ago to the date. Wow. So it was 3-18-2018. Yeah. And so I got sent this email and it was his prophecy. And this is what it said. It said, something is coming that will shake the entire state. People will fear and they will turn to God. Us as believers need to stand in our foundation in Jesus. We won't be shaken and he will see us through this. Yeah, and see, these are such great words right. and so when you have a word from God yeah. you may not see what you want right. in your prayers but right. that's what faith is is believing right. in what you cannot see yeah. and knowing that the power of God is stronger than what is evident and working in your life right at that moment yeah. and so faith over fear is really a choice yeah absolutely I have to choose when that fear wants to come on me when you're going to get those bills in the mail that right. you're like how am I going to pay this my I'm not working right now yeah that fear is going to jump on you. But I'm here to tell you, you switch your thinking over, and especially if you're tithers. Right. Woo, let me tell you, you yeah. are covered by the blood. Right. Because I had that moment myself, and I was yeah. looking through our bills, and I went, <gasps> and the Lord said, you are a tither. Yeah. I've got your back. You have nothing to worry about. And I was like, amen. Yeah. All right. And I had to switch back into faith, and I just yeah. prayed over my bills, and I said, you know what, Lord? You're going to meet every bill. Yeah. You're going to take care of every bill. And so when these thoughts come, because it's a spirit of fear, it's yeah. a spirit, yeah. you fight it with the spirit. And how does, how do you overcome the world? You overcome it with faith and with right. love and with Jesus, right? And he's living on the inside right. of us as Christians. Right. What a powerful message that we have to carry to this world. Well, you said something right now, and you talked about the idea that it is a spirit. And I always, you know, I teach my children the idea, you have not been given a spirit of fear, yes. but of love power and a sound mind so what that says to me what the word is saying that when i created you son when i created you daughter i did not put fear in you so that means anything that is fear is not of me right. and anything that is not of me is not true. not true so i think recognizing that it's not true uh is a powerful thing because fear will present itself and we don't want to over spiritualize it and say oh it doesn't exist because like fear will present it will. itself as a spirit yep. but i think we need to recognize that recognize it's not it. true pastor deborah calls it fear and the acronym for it is fear is false evidence right. appearing real that's good it's not real so good 
Uh, Pastor Richard, would you just walk us through? I know we, we talked about uh, what it means to choose faith over fear, but some of those practical things that will help us in it being a choice for that. Right, right. I think practically there's a lot of real practical things we can all do. I mean, just, I mean, with our own natural bodies, taking care of ourselves, getting our sleep, you know, um, taking our breaks, you know, eating well. I mean, those are real practical things we can do. I know for me, when it comes to my emotions, when it comes to my spirit, um, a lot of times, you know, those, those type of things, uh, they're fed, okay? So what you feed will grow so and what you starve yeah. will exactly. decrease or yeah. die. Yeah. So in a sense, we have to recognize what things am I putting into me as far as news media. And, you know, that's all, I mean, it's important to be informed. I think that's really important, honestly. You know, you need the facts to be able to make those practical decisions. But on the other end, too, you need to make sure you supplement that with the Word of God. And I know it's a little cliche. You think, okay, so read the Word. But I, like I said, it is something that you begin to feed yourself. And it speaks to the emotions, um, in, in which, you know, is, is, is a godly part of us that we need to recognize and take care of. Um, something that I've chosen to do when this all began was to begin to go through the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. And the book of Psalms, um, you know, I, I, I chose that, the Lord led me there because it's a book of poems and songs and different things like that, that God inspired men to write. Mm -hmm. So you see this wild mixture of, of humanity and divinity sounds like Jesus, right. mixing together to present us a whole picture right. of what a healthy spirituality looks like. Um, and just going through Psalm 1, moving, in a, moving through, and um, I know a per personally, um, Psalm 4 really hit me hard. And with this perspective shift, you know, I, I see scripture different yeah. because I see now, okay, my first world problems aren't here anymore. <laughs> These are real problems, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So Psalm 4 really spoke to me. I just, read, I just want to read a couple of verses and kind of break, it, break a couple thoughts down. It says here, um, it's entitled, Answer Me When I Call. In verse, uh, in, in verse 1, it says, Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You've given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. And this is kind of where we all get to at some time where we're like, Okay, God, are you there? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to answer? Right. And that's daily. right, <laughs> right. On, <laughs> every yeah. every morning, it's like, okay, God, you you leave me on red, right? And 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 that's real. That's a real emotion that we can acknowledge. Yeah. And verse two, it says, "O oh men, how long shall my honor be turned to shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies?" And then and then this word comes in, Selah. You know, and the Selah is this pause. It's this break. Whether it's the instruments, it's the lyrics in this yeah. song, and it's kind of like where you. You, you, you hit the brake, you pause, and it's a cause of reflection. Mm -hmm. Almost kind of like you lean in to listen to see what's next. And I love it because the verse here, verse 2 says, Okay, God, how long is everything going to suck? Okay, <laughs> that's, that's where it goes. And, it, and you see in verse 2 it says, oh, God, how long is everything going to suck? Selah. <laughs> <sighs> I think we've all said that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We're all there. I know everybody's there. Like, and some of us on an hourly basis. Right. Okay. We, we just turn your notifications off. Um, and then verse three comes in. And it's funny because you have verse two as a complaint, which is fine. We're, we're all complaining. Uh, but then verse three, after the Salah, he says, but, but know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. There's a whole attitude change here. The Lord hears when I call to him. And, and, and I think that's where scripture reminds me. You know, we say, we say faith over fear. Yeah. We don't, we're, and, and, and we don't say faith instead of fear. Right. And that, what that says is, yes. I'm afraid. I'm going to acknowledge that. Right. I don't know what tomorrow brings, right. but my faith is bigger than my fear. Right. Um, it, it says this in verse four, it says, be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your hearts on your beds and be silent. Another Salah comes in. Right. And see right here, it says, be angry. It says, whatever emotions you're feeling right now, mm -hmm. whatever freak out that you see inside of you, okay, we're going to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. But what it says, be angry and do not sin. It says, your emotions that you're allowed to have, God gave them to you. God gave you those emotions and you feel them. Those are godly, but they're not in the driver's seat. Right. Because my emotion is not causing me to sin. What it means is, whatever my emotion is, I don't have to act on it. Yeah. I can pause, Salah, take a snack break, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, take a yep. nap, yep. go outside, whatever you need to do, if you're allowed to. I think it's healthy to do that too. Have you ever it's like godly. been totally angry at someone or something? Right. And then you go and eat or you walk <laughs> away from the situation and you come back right. and you're like, 
oh, I'm not as mad. Yeah. Right. Or it's not as intense as it was yeah. when I left. Right. I mean, how many times have, I mean, you see the prophet, sometimes it's like they're, they're running for their lives, they're scared, and then God sends an angel to them to minister to them and give yeah. them lunch. Right. Yeah. And it's like, all right, lunch and a nap. Let's do this, God. Don't you yeah. love God? He, yeah. he, he cares about the practical. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Everything's connected. I love it because even in this psalm, it's like, okay, so my mental is connected to my right? spiritual, mm -hmm. is connected to my physical. Mm -hmm. We don't have to deny that. Right. And as long as I do this holistic view right. of who God created me to be, I take care of mind, body, spirit. Yep. Yeah. Then what happens is I take that salah and the Lord reminds me everything's falling apart, but I know God so answers good. the voice of his children. Yeah. It's like we as humans take inventory yep. yeah, it's so of good. like our situation, you know, like if you're not feeling good, oh, I don't feel good. You know, is it, is it my throat? Especially right now you're like yeah. questioning right. things, you know, like, <laughs> it's oh. allergies, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're, and then you stop and you're like, okay, wait, the face side says no, right. you know, I'm fine. Quit being in fear about yeah. this. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. And you go on with your day and you're like, I was right. fine. Right. Yeah. right. You know, right. so I love how he did that in this scripture. Right. Because it was like he was almost taking inventory in the beginning. Right. And then he changed his perspective, but God. Right. You know? Right. Well, you know, to me, it, it brings up an idea, and this is a question for that you guys have, and either one of you can answer. Um, but, you know, we talk about the practical. It's, it is very important. Um, and, and we do talk about being wise in this time and, and taking proper precautions. So that line, I think, could look really blurry when we want to be in fear and when we want to be precautious right. or practically careful. Right. Um, so that we are not because you know there are so many people on every side of this, and we don't, as Christians, we don't want to be judges. The great thing is that we're encouraging people to connect, and we're creating great content like this for people to have to build them up. At the same time, as you're watching this, I'm sure on your side screen you see all this other crap that's just gonna bring ads. your faith down. You know, right? so this is supposed to build you up. But at the same time, you're being inundated with fear all around you, or potentially fear markers. So back to the question. That blurry line of what is practical and what is faith and what is fear and oh my gosh, if I'm checking for a fever, is that am I in fear or am I just right. saying, what's the proper precaution? Right. Uh, you know, I want to observe the the recommendations or you know so you know and we don't have to take stances. I'm not asking us to do that, um, but just kind of addressing the heart of some of those things to really I think give us permission to feel precautious, yeah. to feel like we want to be careful and not really. like we're not in. Yeah. You know, I'm not in fear because I want to be careful. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Or I'm not out of faith because uh, I want to do these things. And wait, I am in faith, but that doesn't mean I should go lick door handles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even on a good day, you shouldn't do that. Right. So it's like that kid at Disneyland. Right. You know, I, I have a son. He's my middle child. And I'm not kidding you. We would stand in those lines and he'd be like. <laughs> and I'm like. Whoa! Like, cause I'm a germ freak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'm right. like, this, and I would just pray in the name of right. Jesus, you're not gonna get anything. And he never did. Right. Right. And so I do believe that that we can overthink things. Mm -hmm. Right. And it gets us out of faith. Right. And I do believe that we know enough about God, like you said, we're depositing that stuff yep. into mm -hmm. us. Yep. That's good. So that when we're right. we find ourselves like as pastors. Mm -hmm. We were like, do we close our doors because right. they're suggesting it? Right. We have a mandate from God to gather, right. you know, um, and and we had to go, well, they're not telling us we can't preach because right. if they did, yeah, right, right you yeah. could jump off the lake. Right. And so th what what are we doing here? We had to, Dan and I had to weigh that. And yeah. then I had to watch him work through that with right. God. Yeah. And and you know what guided him the whole way? With scripture. Amen. That's right. It was literally our anchor in the decision making and that fine line. If you can find a scripture, two or more, it says mm -hmm. if you can find two or more witnesses, then let every word be established. Right. And so when you don't know, go get into the word yeah. and start looking up the things that you're struggling with and right. the things that you need to get yourself in faith for yeah. and go find those. You know, I was reading in Psalms. I love Psalms because Heck yeah. um, I heard it earlier this year, and so I've been doing it with my kids. It's like a read-through. Yeah. And, um, but they said, instead of just reading Psalms, pray that Psalm over yourself yeah, every good. day. That's good. Like, turn it into a prayer. And I've been doing that, and it is just so edifying to my yeah. spirit when I get up in the morning. But Psalms 103, verse 29, it says, He calms the storm yeah. so that in the waves, so the waves are still, that they are glad because they are quiet. Mm -hmm. He guides them to their desired havens. Oh, the men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to those children and to those men. Yeah, right. 
when you don't know what to do, don't do anything yet then. Yeah. Go seek God. He will yeah. bring you to that haven, that quiet right. place where you can hear from the voice of God. You'll hear a soft whisper. Mm-hmm. This just this morning, um, I opened all the blinds and the mountains were there and I was just kind of in awe of who he was. Yeah. And I was just like, right. wow. You're amazing. All this is going on around us, but look at nature. Right. It's growing. It's greener. And here in California, for it to be green is like yeah. amazing because we kind of live in the more desert area. Right. And it's green and lush, and I'm just seeing beauty yeah. everywhere I go. And yet, I'm talking to the Lord, and I said, I don't want to request right now. I don't want to pray for someone right now. I just want to tell you I love you. Right. Yeah, that's and I want to tell you thank you. Yeah. And that's it. And I just kind of sat there with my coffee. Yeah. Just staring. Yeah. And he said, I want you to remember this, daughter, that I'm always bigger than whatever you're right. facing. Yeah, right. As I looked across the valley. Well, God's not tripping when he says, in all things, give thanks. Things. Right. And there's, there's always a reason. And I find when I, you know, we talked about before we started recording, the idea of indicator lights for our fear. Right. Right. When we know maybe it's not like full-fledged fear, but there are lights going off, gauges on our, we're going to blow up. Yep. Uh, signs because we're about you know like you mentioned like if we're getting upset at the kids or a short fuse right. and some of those things are indications that we're getting ob- about to step into fear or unfaith or, or outside of faith would you call them triggers R- right right, right. I- exactly yeah. uh, uh, triggers, triggers that might take us off yeah. right but I found one of the things for me that helps bring that back down on top of putting the word in me and prayer right some, some simple gratitude does that it does. because it takes our focus off of what we can't control yeah. and we're acknowledging. And that, I think that's what the humility that, that God talks about. He wants us to be humility because when we are being grateful in all things, yeah. that there are, in every bad situation, there are still reasons to be grateful. Right. So and when we can focus on that, I believe those things build us up. They puff out our proverbial faith yeah. chest to kind of fight against that spirit of fear. You know, that reminds me of Philippians. I think it's, I want to say it's 417. I might be wrong. Let me look it up. Um, but theologians over here might be able to help me out. But it, <laughs> where it says, do not be anxious for anything, but in prayer and supplication, oh, bring yeah. it before the Lord. Yeah. And I used to anchor myself in that because I found myself worrying all the time. Mm-hmm. It was like as a young child, I remember going to bed at night and thinking, did my parents turn off the stove? Right. And even though my parents were asleep, I would run downstairs and I would check all the burners. Right. Mm. And I mean, I don't know what that was, but it was always on me. It was like yeah. this, this worry. Mm-hmm. And I found myself as a young adult, not young anymore, but a young <laughs> adult at that time, um, really being faced with that challenge of right. like, how am I going to get past this? Mm-hmm. And the Lord brought me that scripture along with Psalm, uh, Matthew 6, um, 25 through 33. Yeah. And it's do not worry about, you know, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink because the lilies of the field, don't they look beautiful in yeah. all their array? And don't the birds of the air, God provides for them. Can he provide right. for you? Right. And it's like, oh yeah, duh. Yeah. You know, but I would have to meditate on those things. Yeah. And that was like, do not be anxious for anything but in prayer and supplication. Supplication is thanksgiving. Right, right. So God is saying, yeah. get yourself off of you. Yes. And get yourself on me. Right. And you're going to be okay. Yeah, it's right. good. The whole perspective shift is really a big thing because it's that mental piece. You know, it's that it's 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 your mind and the way you think that shifts you into um, a, you know a, a carnal way of thinking yeah. or a spiritual way of thinking. Yeah. And I know I've been really blessed, you know, by the words of James, um, where it where he talks about faith and works, mm-hmm. where he says there's this there's this you talk about the line this balance between my faith. And then this practical aspect on how I live. And when those two things are in sync, that happens when you have a right, clear mental picture. Because you're syncing up your heart with the heart of God. You have faith, and then real faith looks like something. So when you take care of that practical piece, you know, he even shows this picture of somebody shows up and they have a practical need. Mm -hmm. You can't just be like, bless you, brother, and go. Hope it works out. He says, you meet that spiritual need. You meet their spiritual need of prayer. And then give them a sandwich too. Yeah. He right. says you do that practical thing. And I think here in this moment, we are in this place where we have this dire need to really sink our, men- our mental capabilities with faith. All right, God, yep. what do you say about this? You know, you're talking about perspective. Right. Look, the church has been around for over 2,000 years and it'll last longer. That's right. Right? right. God has never forsaken his church. And that happens when people get that place where I have this fearless tenacity of faith that right. God is on the throne. Right. And I live that out by 
practically loving my neighbor. I take care of my health. I take care of the health of the people around me. Mm. Yes. Now, I'm going to give them their sandwich. I'm going right. to give them their six feet if they need that six right. feet. Yeah. You know, and I'm going to take care of those needs and I'm going to examine it. I just saw a picture of somebody, uh, one of my friends, that you know, she is leaving a disinfected snack out for all the delivery people. Right. That's Jesus. Yes. That's faith. Yeah. That right. says, I know things are crazy, but I want you to be reminded that God is always right. good. Right. And you'll see that through me being good to you. Well, I, I'm not thinking about me right now. I'm thinking about someone else. Yep. And that see? puts the focus off and that builds us That's up. That's a good but word. But isn't that Jesus? Right, exactly. Right. He only thought of us. Right. He gave us a life for us. Yeah. That's a good word. So we can walk this out yeah. in faith. Absolutely, guys. Hey, we're going to be wrapping up. I'm going to look at this camera right here. What did we talk about today? We talked about faith over fear. We talked about it being a choice. I want to give all of us just maybe one last sign off. And then I'm going to ask you, Pastor Just, to close us out in a prayer. Sure. Yeah. I can't help but feel so impressed that there are those of you watching who fear has just kind of been what you've been riddled with. And our prayer is that you are encouraged by this, even wondering, hoping that you are not in fear uh, or feeling guilty or in condemnation about those choices. You are a child of God. Let's be in faith. Let's walk this out together. Uh, watch for some other things going on. We're going to be posting other opportunities for you to get your faith. We're talking about building up our faith. You know, content is great. These conversations are great. We're glad that you're joining us. But get into the Word. Spend some time in prayer. Uh, it's going to be so, so good. Uh, whoever, who wants to go first? So just kind of maybe a cl closing thought. You, yeah. I, I just want to say I'm really glad to be a part of this. I'm glad that, you know, when all else fails, there's a word of God. And you know what? I just want to tell everybody out there right now, you got good news inside of you, so share it with somebody. There's plenty of bad news out there, yeah. but you can be the one to tell somebody what God says. Well, let's pray. I want to pray against that spirit of fear. You know, I dealt with it. It was something I grew up with, and when the Lord really dealt with me, you need to cast this thing out and tell it to go where to go. So, you know, spirit of fear, it needs to go somewhere. So I'm going to send it back to hell. Yeah. And then every time you feel that thing coming back, that fear just wants to jump back on it. You just remind it, uh-uh, you don't get to play in this court. Like, you don't get to be in this house. You don't get to be in this mind. I'm sending you back in Jesus' name. And we're going to use the power of Jesus' name over this. So let's pray. Dear Father God, we just come before you. Lord, we just lift up every person listening right now. And Lord, we just pray a special covering upon their hearts and their minds. Lord, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And right now, we speak to you, evil, foul spirit of fear. We command you right now to go back to hell where you came from and you do not get to live in their territory. These are children of the Most High God and they are covered by the blood of the Lamb. And so we break every assignment, we break every spirit that has tried to torment them, tried to be in their dreams, tried to take over their homes and their thoughts. And Lord, we pray for the power of God to be released on that. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing to fall on their homes, Lord. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're gonna do a new work inside of us. And so Lord, we thank you for peace. We thank you that you are in control and we stand in faith today with you God in Jesus mighty name. Amen. amen. Love you Rock Church.